Welcome to Keller's Coder. Today, lesson 6 in the Commodore 64 assembly course, Color RAM. Motherfucker! Yo, dudes and dudettes, welcome to lesson 6 of Commodore 64 assembly. Today, we're going to play with Color RAM, with the 16 psychedelic colors. And we're going to create something that is akin to a nice. LSD trip, it looks like this. Yeah, man, psychedelic ride. So let's jump in. And pass the Dutchie from the left hand side, yo, pass the Dutchie from the left hand side. So today we will be explaining color RAM. When you have a screen RAM, so the VIC is pointing to a block in memory, and this address can be changed, so you can double buffer. Then each cell of the screen mem has a corresponding cell in the color RAM starting at D800. D801 will correspond with the character on 401 or whatever screen RAM you set to. Now screen RAM can be relocated. Color RAM is always this fixed hardware address. Now during this lesson I will start to copy some code because as you can see it's getting a bit more substantial. And let's first start by com setting these. Uh, we come to the raster line a bit later. That's also a new concept. And let's uh, use the basic upstart. And this is going to run forever so let's use our loop. And let's first set the background to a zero and the border. So remember, we can use and five three two eight zero and five three two eight one to actually poke zero to the borders. Or what we tend to use is these. Oh, this should be a dollar. You could make constants or vars out of this or labels. Yeah, these will never change, so I'm happy with that. And when I see them, I know what they are. Right, then we need to actually uh, fill the screen. Fill the screen. And let's make it a function that takes the accumulator as an argument. And we set a dot in there. And I can copy this code because we actually did that in lesson one already. The clear screen is just being reused to use fill screen. So for the ones that jump in, we have this constant set to 0400. We set X to zero. So what is in A, that is our quote unquote argument dot. We write that on position 400 offset uh, in this case, zero uh, for one zero zero, uh, sorry, five hundred, uh, six hundred, and to e eight, and we do that two hundred fifty five times, and we just fill it up. Right. Okay. So now we should have a screen that contains dots, and that we loop forever into. Yeah, black border, black background, and dots. That's nice. Right, now we actually need to fill the color RAM. So let's just copy that code as well, because it is, in essence, as you can see, exactly the same. Except we're here calling a function that we still need to implement, but we do the same except we use a Y here. I don't know why I do that, but whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, I do know. I use X uh, in get next core. But yeah, we do the same thing. We set Y to zero. We write whatever is in the accumulator. That is what we get from uh, the get next caller to that location. So 400, 500. Uh, 700 and, and this one and then we do one so we'd write it to 401 501 502 etc 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 
So basically filling the colors. Now I have a sort of a naming convention, get next color, that if I have a subroutine that I write it above, that is something that comes from uh, my C time, that if you do not want to prototype everything on the top, you just bring that function to the top. And even in Java, I program like that. So I don't need to search uh, willy nilly up or down. I just always scroll up and that's when I find it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a variable. And that is the first time that we do a variable. In Kick Assembler, it's really simple. We give it a name, color offset. That's it's just a label. And it is of the type byte. And we initialize it to that. This will be basically a pointer into an array that I'm now going to copy. Because an array is nothing more than contiguous bytes in memory. And the reason why I use a variable for, uh, for this, I could use zero space because uh, zero page because I have the space. But generally I use memory unless I uh, get into performance issues. Looking up a zero page is always quicker than uh, looking up memory because you can do it in two cycles less. Right, so this is our color gradient. Uh, I sat around when I created this lesson to find a nice gradient. Uh, it's trial and error. So these are 14 values. And we're basically going to load a value. X, that's why I use Y there, because I'm going to clobber it. We're going to save cycles by not storing stack. But that requires us to really think ahead. If you want to be need use the stack save your registers but it will eventually slow down to the stuff that we get to so we load x and then we want the color offset we compare x to uh, 13 because there are 14 values here starting uh, at zero if it's equal then we branch to this Let's implement that. So we load X with zero and we uh, store X in color offset. Right, and otherwise we jump to this exclamation mark. Oh, I need to do <laughs> That was wrong, it's like so, yeah. And then we load in A what is in the color gradient, in the gradient color, comma X. And we increment what is in the color offset. So if we reset it, it will be zero. We have read zero, then the next run it will be one, etc. So we then have that color. Will it actually fill the colors? Let's see. So let's call that uh, subroutine, not get next color, but fill colors. Because fill colors will call get next color. And let's see what happens here. Well, there we have it. It's already working. We got a nice pulsing seizure inducing color grid, but it moves a bit too fast. So let's slow it down with a pull of the raster line. Now, usually pulling the raster line is a bad idea, but since we are using only uh, this task, no interrupts in between, we can get away with it. And there's no need of making stuff more complex than it needs to be. So let's load in X. Uh, sorry, in A, the line that we want to wait for. Let's let's do this, and then we will compare what is in the raster line in memory to what is in A. So A is set to line FF. This counts the lines from zero to uh, what is it? Three uh, to eighty, something like that. So we're well in the in the bottom. And if it's uh, not equal, 
or less than branch not equal let's do that we branch to wait uh, wait so let's do that here so now we should wait for a single frame that shouldn't make too much of a difference just a little but as you can see we we were drawing a lot faster initially than we do now but it's still a bit too fast so we need to wait a number of frames let's introduce a new variable let's call it frame delay it's also a single byte and we set that to zero we're using hex everywhere so why not there so each time that we actually hit this line and the rest of the line we can actually increment uh, delay what was it called <laughs> frame delay then here we can load that frame delay and in X let's compare it to uh, let's do so we are incrementing this from zero so let's wait 12 frames so let's do 13 magic number if it is branch equal then we again jump here that will be this and otherwise we jump to loop we're waiting for a new line oh, jump plus and otherwise it would uh, draw these colors and we need to of course uh, reset that frame delay so we don't need to implement a modulo that is very complex in a 6502 so let's do it the easy way store x frame delay yeah let's see and there we go we have it now this zigzag pattern that happens because the number of colors is not divisible uh, 40 is not divisible by these number of colors so obviously when we redraw them we get this little offset and we get this typical 80s zigzag pattern now you can actually we re do it twice if we do it single time you will see there is a difference in that pattern it will be a bit wider and it will actually seem to scroll up and it starts with this uh, yeah more like a wave initially before that zigzag comes but we can also do it uh, jump several times we are skipping a lot of colors there and we get a even more freaky but yeah you can play around with this now you can also use a different i like the one different characters because of course that gives also a different effect so let's say uh, 122 i believe that is a a block character yeah and you would need to actually make a proper character set for these to actually fill them in but yeah and what we can actually do with these moving colors is actually something else that is the next lesson that i'm still extending on is actually also pulse these letters that is something that you've seen a lot and it's the same principle basically we just do it in two lines because this is a two line font it's a a taller font so i use two lines to make up a single character but we come to that in the next lesson so there you have it man psychedelic colors on the commodore 64 and we learned a lot of different concepts man we learned how to check the rest of the line what the commodore 64 is drawing and we did arrays and we did variables and we did colors lots and lots of colors and it's important to really grab this concept because in the next lesson we're going to make awesome psychedelic extended fonts that has psychedelic colors as well man now i hope you learned something and i hope to see you in the next one now it is off to the coffee shop to buy some more weed 
to see some more psychedelic colors, dude. Oh yeah.